What's going on, everybody? Chef here. Welcome back to the channel. Another highly anticipated week ahead of us with two major events, CPI on Wednesday and the start of second quarter earnings season. Now, if you remember just three short months ago when the first quarter was released, a lot of these companies had given numbers that did not satisfy investors as well as their forward outlook had shown a decrease in demand as well as supply chain issues still affecting some of their ability to produce their products. So this quarter is going to be no different. We're gonna take a look at some charts and what happened last time CPI was released as analysts expectations are seeing that the number is going to be higher than the 8.6. And I'm also gonna give you my take by just taking a look at gas prices alone in the month of June versus the month of May. We're also gonna go over some charts because some of these bigger companies such as Apple and Tesla, especially after um, Elon Musk had announced that he is not going to acquire Twitter. Tesla had a big move after hours. And some of these bigger uh, blue chip stocks are starting to show a little bit breakouts on the daily chart. So we're going to cover everything, guys. Let's get right into it. OK, as you can see right here, CPI data and the start of the second quarter earnings season could set course for markets and result in volatile trading in the week ahead. And the June CPI is expected to show headline inflation above that 8.6 level. Now, the China had just released their CPI numbers and they were in line month over month. However, for us, I think it's going to be a little different. And if you take a look at the average gas price, this is just gas alone. The average gas price in May, okay, this is every week, from May 2nd to May 30th, you've got a difference between 428 and 472. Let's say the average is 450. However, when you jump over to June, which by the way, we have seen crude oil decrease, okay? The price at uh, one of the pumps I saw, I saw on Facebook by where I live is all the way down to 436. That's just over the last two weeks. Those are still July numbers. But when you look at June, there's an average of 497 to all the way up as a high of 510 to 497. So still seeing an average of about a 45 to 50 cent increase month over month. OK, that's about a 10 percent increase from where we were. Obviously, gas, fuel, energy is the one that is really carrying the CPI, but it's also the leader, meaning that by the time your, your commodities, your, you know, your food prices rise, gas has to rise much further. I've seen some of the, you know, the grocery stores just over the past week to two weeks that, you know, the, the standard products that maybe had gone from a dollar 99 to two twenty nine are now two ninety nine. OK, it always tends to lag just just because obviously by the time some of these companies, you know, get to look over their books, see their numbers and what they're spending, it takes time for those adjustments to come. So seeing a number higher than eight point six percent is highly likely. Now, the caveat is going to be if they come out and they, you know, say, you know, the consensus is nine percent and, and it is higher, but we get an eight point nine percent. Well, <laughs> technically, that is a little bit of a beat and the market is going to react a little bit differently okay i have this chart pulled up on thinkorswim over here what happened leading into the cpi release so if you remember we were channeling between this 407 and 417 area for quite some time all the way from that may 27th after a good size rally up until june 8th june 9th was no difference we were channeling into that and just a few hours before market close on june 9th when cpi was released on the 10th we really start to see a, a pullback a heavy sell-off all the way back down to that 401 level okay from where we were basing at around let's say 410 once the cpi was released we opened up that morning at 395 closed to 389 on the release date okay which was a friday carry over the weekend Crypto had a little bit of a sell-off and we went all the way down. This was a massive move. Let's just take it from 410 to where we were to the bottom of, of 362. And how many days was this? Three, about six, seven, six days, okay, on this bar, six days. And we dropped 11.5% or 47 points, all right? So the market can react very heavily if these numbers are higher than expectations, if they do show... OK, you know, clear signs of not being improved. Now, yesterday, you know, the jobs report was released and the market had a hard time reacting, as you remember, probably pre-market. OK, the jobs numbers was a massive beat and except the market pulled very heavily, you know, opening the day up. And I think it was because investors are saying, wait a minute, 
obviously the market or, or the economy is, is not slowing down and therefore inflation is going to can continue. If people are hiring, they're spending money that, that shows that, you know, the demand is still there, meaning that, you know, inflation can continue. Market was very, very choppy going into it. All right. Now let's take a look at an overview of the entire market. I want to cover a few different things. As you can see, Tesla did uh, have a nice move after hours. It closed at about that 752 level, got all the way up to the 780. When you zoom out to a larger time frame, you can see I have this blue line right here. All right, this is going to be a little bit of a breakout on Tesla. This line is at the 780 mark, which it did bounce off of. Let's see how it opens up pre-market. It does have a little bit of room all the way up to, obviously, the, about that you know 800 psychological, 850 are, are going to be difficult for it, but back up to that 860 level, which was once a big um, you know, area of support. If you look at just a couple other charts, let's look over at Apple. Apple's the same way. It looks like it really wants to break over once it gets higher than that 151 level, giving room all the way back up to 157. The reason why I talk about these two companies is because they can really lead the entire market. The SPY, the QQQ is higher. If you've got companies weighted as heavily as Apple, Tesla, even Microsoft as another one where the chart doesn't look as pretty it did reclaim you know the 34 to 50 you know ema it's trying to hold on to that these are the ema clouds that i got from from ripster if you haven't checked it out you can google it um it, it shows a very you know uh broad range rather than just a line but it did recover that and it does want to get over that 267 area to be once again on the breakout and if you take a look at spy my only concern still continues from a daily chart you watch this the, you know the spy is moving on declining volume. It did have a little bit of extra volume on Friday, but you can see the general consensus on where the volume is headed is slowing down, all right? And when you have this type of divergence, okay, where volume is, is decreasing, but price is increasing, it's a very bearish signal, all right? So that is my only concern with the entire market. All right, it does look like it's it is clearly hitting resistance at that 390 level. It struggled, you know, not only on Friday, but also on Thursday. Okay. But as you can see here, same thing. I'm going to zoom out to this, this daily chart. Just one more time for you guys. Just expect if CPI does have, you know, you know, a release of higher than expectations, just know the move can be very heavy to the downside. Now there was a lot of people with a severely bearish sentiment, you know, going into, you know, uh, if you look at the, the, the puts that just expired yesterday on the eighth, as well uh, as on the 15th, and obviously, you know that, you know, market makers tend to cause the most amount of pain, all right, to where they can position the price and where they can move the price and hold the price and pin it in order to pretty much hurt the most amount of people and cause the most amount of, uh, you know, options to expire out of the money. That's how they can continue to be profitable. And unfortunately, it's just the way the game is played. So keep in line for not only CPI set to be released, don't try to anticipate the move. If you're not already in puts, you don't have to get into it before. All right. Obviously, if it, there is any sign of slowing inflation, the market can, you know, viciously move to the upside. There's a lot of money on the sidelines. Okay. But wait for it. As you can clearly see, like I've showed you before, this is where the move happened. There's still plenty of room to the downside and plenty of times, you know, to ride it. Even though it pulls heavy pre market, wait for a little bit of profit taking, a little bit of pop, you know on that Wednesday morning, and you could be able to ride it to the downside. If it does show a little bit, just know that some of these others, or it does show a little bit of cooling, just know that some of these other blue chip stocks, their charts are really showing for another move to the upside. Okay, last thing I do want to cover, and I've talked about this a little bit, this is ARKK. We were talking about this uh, you know, inside the group. When you zoom out to the weekly chart, it does show a bit of a basing here. Okay, all the way back from that, that 33 bounce. And you can see I have this shaded area. Um, couple things. One, high growth is generally the first to get crushed in time in shifts. Okay, when we're shifting out of a bull market into a bear market, high growth is the first one to go. A lot of money will shift over in, into blue chip stocks. It'll shift over into your you know discretionary, your consumer staples. Okay, some you know all your stocks listed in the Dow. That's where the first shift will happen. Reason being is because growth stocks are completely valued on future revenue. However, being the fact that they're the first ones 
to start to pull back when the shift eventually happens, as you can see, looking all the way back from, you know, you know, you know, 2021, rather than, you know, you see the spy start to pull back in 2022. Okay. It's also the first one to base. And the reason being is because some of these stocks can only go so low. Now, the reason why I look at ARC is because it's an ETF. It's a high growth, you know, you know, it's obviously an innovation, but it's a high growth ETF. Some of the stocks that did run that were high growth in the high growth sector that did run previously will probably run again. We'll have some nice moves, but some of these companies won't. All right. And eventually when we do get back into that bull market and, and there's clearly some time, all right, but the point is to prepare for this. But when we do get into that, you know, bull market and eventually when we get back into that euphoric stage, there's going to be a whole another realm and, and world of companies and stocks that are going to have your attention, that are going to run. There's gonna be another microvision that goes from a dollar to 20. There's gonna be another BNGO, okay, okay, and plenty of other ones. So don't always just focus back on the single individual tickers that are beaten down, that did run, that are starting to base. You could take a look at an ETF if you're looking at dollar cost average for a long-term investment. If not, just wait until we start to enter that euphoric stage because like I said, a lot of these companies that run are gonna be different. So guys, that's it for this video. See you in the next one.